course, my name is Connor, and welcome to today's live stream show. It's the Bitcoin having week, so we're going live every single day. So let's not waste any time, and let's get right into it right now. So we'll start off just looking at the overall market. Before I get into it, I want to give a shout out to everybody in the live chat already. We got Dan Nugan, we got Elvis, we got Reverend Flashback, we got Hank, and we got All Day Dre with us. Shout out to you guys for being here nice and early at the start of the stream. Be sure to smash that like button as you're coming in to help boost the engagement of this live stream. So now getting into the market, Bitcoin right now at 64K, ETH at 3100. Overall, things are relatively you know, kind of flat. And we did see a, a decent bounce on altcoins, but you know, overall, still a lot of ground to be made up here. A lot of ground to cover to get back to where things were. And we saw a lot of a lot of altcoins get absolutely demolished and, and wrecked and you know a few rug pulls on such as Grand Base, GB on base. Luckily, I never held any of that, but I know some people were affected by some, some stuff like that. A lot of AI coins with Undox teams also kind of rugged. So that's what happens, right? It's important to pick quality coins and not FOMO into what all the Twitter influencers are shilling because you don't know their true motive at the end of the day. But let's start off talking about the situation in the Middle East because nobody knows what's going to happen here. It could escalate. And if it does escalate, we will go lower before we go higher. So Alex Kruger always has some good macro takes. And let's see what he has to say about the situation over in the Middle East right now. He says, I hope you can understand how bullish the Bitcoin chart is. The only thing that has changed is the market. In the market, is it's much healthier after a proper cleansing. A really good leverage flush out is what we just had with that crash. To 60k on bitcoin and all coins obviously got smoked he says everyone is now talking about what an obvious top it was that is nonsense that is nonsense hindsight bias the market was hot but the market had been red hot since mid-february february 8th to be exact is when the rally started he says in fact those who exited when the market got hot sold bitcoin in the low 50 thousands this is important so listen up Markets can run hot for a very long time. War concerns triggered a correction. Without the war, the correction would have come with Bitcoin much higher. All right, so that's a great take on the whole situation, you know, with the war in the Middle East. It triggered a proper cleansing in the market. And if we didn't have these headlines come out, the market would still be higher right now, but we would have had this correction no matter what. So there's no sense in playing the hindsight game and saying, oh, I wish I did that. I wish I sold my coins before they all crashed. That's all hindsight nonsense, right? Hindsight's always 2020. It's important to always be looking ahead here. So let's go take a look at Bitcoin right now. Being that we have our bearings straight and we know what happened and let's talk about what can come next. So we're on the four hour time frame here for Bitcoin. And the first thing to note is that we got rejected by the four hour 200 EMA. That's at $66,850. So you can see price came right to the level, put a wick in, touched this pink EMA and got rejected. And we're still in this orange box. This is all the chop zone. As you can see, I have it labeled in the chop zone. All right, so as long as we're here, we are chopping, chopping and slopping. Now, if we do have some escalation and some more some more bearish headlines come out for the market. Well, what can happen is we're going to break 60K. And like we discussed, you know, we're probably going to come down here to the low 50s. That's still very much on the cards. That's still very much can happen. So we have some amazing prices on altcoins. You know, Bitcoin obviously at a, at a nice discount from the recent 73K high, but that it does not mean that everything is fine and dandy and we're going to start pumping from here we could definitely see lower prices so if you do have dry powder like i always say it's best to scale into the market and then when it's time to sell you can scale out that doesn't mean you one clip everything in one transaction market order no that's not how you do it right you gradually scale in over time and you know with with these huge discounts and fear in the air they always bring the best opportunities to buy crypto just as an example, we'll go back in time a little bit on Bitcoin on the monthly time frame. And Bitcoin on the monthly time frame, if you guys recall what happened in February of 2022, over here, 
uh, over here. You can't see it on the monthly, really, but basically that's when the Ukraine Russia conflict started over here. And we wicked down to like 33K and then we ended up bouncing up to 48,000. And that was the 61.8, I believe, retracement. All right, 38.2% retracement. And then we crashed the bear market lows from this point. But, anyways, that was a great time to buy. Of course, we had the FTX fiasco. When did that happen? November of 2022. And that marked the exact bottom on Bitcoin. So what I'm trying to say right now is that these times of fear are the best times to buy crypto. And also, obviously, March 2020, we all remember what happened there. Major fear, major crash. That was the generational bear market bottom. So this is a blessing in disguise. Obviously, it's messed up what's happening in the world. Nobody wants to see this happen, right? But we are market speculators. We care about cryptocurrency on this channel. That is the main priority here. And of course, making gains by playing the market. And that's what I've been doing now for three years straight. And that's what I will continue to do and focus on. So yeah, it's messed up what's happening in the world. But you know, these times of fear and messed up things happening, make prices go lower. And these usually end up being the best times to buy. All right. So we have to take what we can get. We have to look at the glass as half full and not half empty, be an optimist, not a pessimist. There's too much negative energy in the world already. So we have to look on the bright side of things and just I'm looking at it as we have cheaper prices now to get into things that we like. Some bullish news coming out is that China is opening up the floodgates for crypto. They approved a spot ETF for Ethereum and Bitcoin. So it's the same thing as a US ETF. It just means that Chinese citizens are they're in Hong Kong, you know, they can go buy the ETF and the ETF has to buy Bitcoin or Ethereum from the market directly when when a buy comes in on the ETF. So this is very bullish. We know that the Asian market loves Bitcoin, they love Ethereum, they love crypto overall, and they have a lot of money to inject into the system. So let's go take a look at the total market cap chart of crypto. We'll look at the total. This is everything. And the total, you know, we're still holding the support at 2.2 trillion. Again, if we're going to have some more fear headlines, we'll probably come down and we'll we'll test some of these lower levels like 2 trillion and possibly this 200 daily EMA at 1.83 trillion. That would be, again, extremely oversold. Notice how in a bull run, you know, once the bull run starts, in this case, it happened over here in October. These EMAs don't really get touched. This 100 simple daily moving average got touched one time in January after the ETF got approved, right? We sunk a little bit. We touched that EMA and we pumped to new highs. So when we come to these levels in a bull run, it's very bullish, right? It just marks extreme oversold levels and typically they're, they're great prices to buy. So that's our total market cap. We're, we're going to see if the support holds, you know, if not, we have the obvious level to crack at 2.7 trillion, very simple stuff. Now the total two, this is not including Bitcoin. It looks identical to the total, but we are touching the daily 100 simple moving average. The total three is altcoins, and this is my main prerogative, right? Because I'm heavy in altcoins compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum. And the total three right now, it looks identical to the total one and the total two, you know, but overall, we could come down further to around 540 billion. And that would be an obvious horizontal level on the chart as well right over here, like 530, 540 billion. So possibly some more downside here. I'm definitely prepared for more downside, uh, some more dry powder on the sideline. You know, but overall, like I said, these times of volatility and fear are the best times to get into crypto. And we have the Hong Kong ETFs getting approved. It's very bullish stuff. We're in a bull market, right? So I wouldn't get phased out of things. This is the time to, to capitalize on, on the discounted prices. Let me see what's going on in this live chat. See if I missed anything. Shout out to Bilal and Yazin M. We also got Jazzy in the building as well as Kazuya and Crypto Ranger talking about CCC, the QCAT candle. QCAT candle is doing pretty good right now. This is the resistance dog on Telegram pumping, but CCC right now, 14.6 mil. Holding relatively well. I mean, nothing is really moving on base overall. Even like Brett and Toshi, all the big ones, they're just completely flat. So yeah, I mean, the market isn't really doing much right now in terms of bullish things. Anyways, Crypto Ranger, good to see you, brother. We got Adrian Adrian Kent, 
Crypto Ranger says, congrats on 50K. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that. Bilal says, what are your thoughts on GPU? So again, this is one of those 5-5 five, five tax farms. I think this one might be 4-4, four, four, you know, AI coin. I don't know if their team is doxed. 4-4 four, four tax. Look, I, I, I would stick with the AI picks that I like. I don't trust any of this on-chain stuff. I don't think this is listed on any centralized exchange. We don't know who the founders are. It could easily be a rug pull. I don't know. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. Let's see, is this listed anywhere? No, it's on, it's on Bing X. All right, so it's decent. Bing X is a decent exchange, but I don't know. My, that's my thoughts on GPU. I just don't know. I don't fully trust it, so I'm not going to invest into it. Zen says that he lost a lot. Zen, I'm sorry to hear that, brother. You have to be super careful buying these coins that don't have a public team that pop up out of nowhere. You can only buy them on Uniswap and... They have a bunch of promises and no actual delivery of anything. That's what Grand Base was, as well as, you know, like Scalia, OPSEC, all, all these AI coins that popped up out of nowhere and get shilled by these Twitter influencers. There's, there's no substance to them. And fortunately, I didn't touch any of them. Um, besides CloudNet, I got rugged on that. I lost a little bit, but it was, it was a very small position because I knew there was a high possibility of it being a rug. But, you know, overall... I would stay away from a lot of these on-chain coins that are shilled by Twitter guys that are also anonymous. There's just too much garbage out there. Stick with the good ones. But Zen, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Kazuya says, I believe if escalated Bitcoin will go to 55K or if there's a cyber attack, a double bottom at 61K. Yeah, Kazuya, who knows what's going to happen here, man. Uh, right stream and Chirpley. Um... I don't really know too much about any of those. I think Chirply has something to do with AI. But other than that, I'm not really too sure what those projects are. We'll we'll open up the altcoin discussion in a little bit. Rigoberto's here. What's going on, Rigoberto? Uh, we got Rich Hart. He says, Connor, big moves coming in. Important week for bagging. 100%. It's a very important week. We got Black Sun. Shout out to Black Sun. We got Thrive Integration. Shout out to Thrive Integration saying, what's up, brother? You've been crushing it in your private Discord. Appreciate your insights. Thank you for your support, brother. I appreciate that. Marcus says, is there anything you're looking at adding to your portfolio in this pullback? Yeah, that's a great question, Marcus. Let's get into some altcoins. So I did uh, get more Cubic below 5,000 per billion. I really like Cubic as an AI coin. Um, you know, it's one of my top ones. So there's that. Uh, Tectum is another one that's at a huge discount. And I think Tectum's a great layer one. So yeah, I like Tectum. And like I said yesterday, and people are asking me about AI coins, and I'm talking about these ones like GPU and OPSEC that are you know just pulling the rug beneath everybody's feet who buys them. So let's go to my AI watch list. So in terms of AI coins, Tau is great. Tau is the leader in AI. But you know, if you have a small amount of capital, I don't know if you should focus on Tau, as well as some of the other big ones like Render, Acash. OXO at 30 cents, I think is a great buy. I haven't bought any more of that though. And then AGC at 73 is also a good buy. But in terms of the other ones, like I said in yesterday's stream, uh, there's Delisium AGI. And, you know, I first started covering this one at like three cents, just below three cents over here in like November. And now it's at 24 cents. I still think it's a good buy. I, I think that this is one of the best projects in terms of their technology, what they're doing and what they're building. AI agents, like a kind of like a AI open world metaverse type of thing. They got good tech. So Delisium. And then, like I said yesterday, right, all these coins like OPSEC, GPU, they're all claiming to have these storage centers with all these GPUs that will be used for AI processing power. But we don't actually know if it's true OPSEC got caught putting fake images and videos of like these GPU storage centers up before. But one project that I know for a fact actually has a legitimate center, um, like warehouse in, in Romania for GPU processing powers, AI tech, Solidus. Now, this is something I'm looking into and I might take a position in this because, again, we can go chase all these Anon teams like OPSEC and GPU, or, or we can go for the actual legit one that is proven to have, you know, the, the warehouse full of GPUs. Um, so, yeah, this one, AI Tech, is what I'm looking into as well in terms of AI coins. 
But yeah, we'll cover some more coins I'm looking at as we go through the stream, Marcus. But that's a good question. And that's, uh, you know, hopefully that gives you some insight. But yeah, Cubic is my main priority for sure. I'm stacking quite a bit of it. So we'll see if it pays off. Uh, let's see. Pepe Coins and Base AI. Again, I don't really love those. I think that they could do well, but they're just not my cup of tea. 300 mil market cap. It's, it's overall decent. Only reason this pumped in the first place was because it, it just got shilled to the heavens from like Kyle Chastity and Crypto Banter. So I don't know if it's going to be sustainable. What are my thoughts on Coinbase listing Pepe soon? That's very bullish and very good for the meme ecosystem overall. I think Pepe getting listed on Coinbase is going to provide a lot of trust for some of these other meme coins. And I think meme coins will continue to do really well this cycle. Are you saying all GPU coins with tax are most likely a scam? OPSEC has a docs team. That must be new OPSEC with a docs team because I know for the longest time they weren't. So they must have doxed themselves because they got so much pressure to do so. And yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying, that most of these GPU coins that are only on Uniswap with taxes, there's a good chance a lot of them are just complete fabricated projects with no substance and they're, yeah. So, you know, be careful what you trust. I just went over some ones that I think are good. Based AI over Tau. We'll see about that, but um, I don't know about that. Uh, let's see. This guy says one red month for Bitcoin after seven consecutive green months is actually completely foreseeable and reasonable pre-true bull run. Yeah, it's very healthy too for the market. It's pullback. It's very, very he healthy and it will lead to a sustained run higher. Uh, Kazuya says, I just managed to find you yesterday. I realized what I was missing. Glad to have stumbled upon you. Thank you for being here and for saying that. Kazia. Thrive Integration says Boda and CCC or a couple of your big call, meme calls. What do you think about the charts? Invest more or liquidate a bit. So I think that CCC is, you know, maybe it will come in and put like a double bottom in, but like maybe it will put in a double bottom like this. But overall, it looks very healthy. Um, and I think it's, I think this one has way more upside than downside. Like I said, I think this is going to be a blue chip meme on base and then Boda. You know, getting into this so low, I don't plan on on buying more myself. Uh, where is Boda? Down a bit today. Yeah, I mean, this one's one of the strongest communities out there. So, like, I don't know. Like, no, meme coins are extremely volatile. They can move up 50% and down 50% within an hour. You know, they can pump 200% and, and go down 90% within an hour, too. All right. So, you know, to, for me to say invest more or liquidate, I, I can't give you that answer. I don't know what's going to happen. Nobody does. And, you know, overall, this isn't a time where I would consider selling any coin, right? With the market where it is so down, like now is not the time to be selling, in my opinion. This bull run is not over. We have a lot higher to go over the course of this year in 2024. So, I mean, if you want to like reposition some stuff and, and like move some stuff around in your portfolio, that would make sense. But, you know, to exit doesn't make sense to me. What wallet do you hold cubic in the cubic wallet? Just go to their discord and they have like a full guide with links on how to get that wallet set up. All right, let's go ahead and move on. Before we do, we got I abandoned with a $2 super chat. He says, do you think SWFTC is a good play? First things first, I've never heard of SWFTC. Let's see what it is. Swift coin. It looks like a meme. 42 mil market cap. It's a blockchain. Been around from 2017. Let's see the chart. And where is it traded? All right, it's on quite a few places. That's good. Now, if I see this chart, I'll know instantly if it's going to be a good play. SWFTC. Why is it not showing up? SWFTC. All 
All right, we'll see this chart on Dex Tools. Give me a weekly. All right, this is not good because I can't see going back all these years. Like, I don't know. I can't see the chart on TradingView to see the full data. Uh, but overall, I don't know if it's a good play or not. I don't know enough information to say that. Real quick, let's look at this CoinGecko chart. Go to max. So it's been around literally from 20. No, it's not a good play. It's been through two cycles already and they haven't managed to do anything. So I, I would just say go with a newer AI coin if you want an AI coin. Anyways, let me see what's going on with some more news. So in regards to DeFi news, the SEC is going after Uniswap now. So the DeFi exchange Uniswap received enforcement notice from the SEC. The CEO, Hayden Adams, said that they are ready to fight after receiving the notice that the regulator is planning an enforcement action. So this is no surprise. This is exactly what I've been saying now for many months here on the channel. And just to repeat myself, because I know there's a lot of new people that have you know just stumbled up across Crypto Empire. This is the last cycle of, our, of its kind that we know. Next cycle, there is not going to be the same meme coin on-chain casino that we have now. They're going to regulate all the decentralized exchanges like Uniswap. Of course, new ones can pop up. It's on the blockchain. So if anything can pop up on the blockchain. That's the beauty of blockchain technology. That's why I love crypto because, you know, the Gestapo can't just come after you and shut you down. It doesn't work like that on the blockchain. It's, it's, it's like fair play for everyone. But, you know, in terms of regulation, they are going to regulate everything and it's going to be brutal and the the freedoms that we enjoy now like swapping on uniswap and buying and selling memes and having fun on the on-chain casino it's not going to look the same at all next cycle it's going to be very different and it's not going to be nearly as fun so this is the start of it with the sec coming after uniswap look we know the sec doesn't really have much substance in their court cases and again this is regulation via enforcement like they're using their power to tr to try and basically like corner Uniswap and and go after them. So he says the reality is that tokens are a digital file format like a PDF or spreadsheet and can store many kinds of value. They are not intrins intrinsically securities, just as every sheet of paper is not a certificate of stock. Uh, the overwhelming volume of traded tokens are definitively not securities. They are stable coins, community and utility tokens and commodities like Ethereum and Bitcoin. So again, the SEC doesn't have much substance here, but this is the start of it and it's not going to stop. The enforcement's going to get harder and harsher and they want to regulate and control everything. So just be prepared for that and understand that this window of opportunity that we have right now in the present moment with this cycle is a blessing. And it's a very rare window of opportunity in the overall timeline of you know, our lives. Right. This is a brief little window of, of this insane opportunity in crypto, and it's not going to be the same in 2028. So just capitalize on it, you know, really focus up and lock in and and make the most of this cycle because it will not look the same after this one. This is going to be like the last major. There's always going to be more opportunities to invest in the market. Don't get me wrong. But times are good right now. It's a blessing. Just don't let it slip through your fingers without capitalizing on it as best as you can in your current situation. Make the best with what you have and see where the chips fall at the end of it, but do everything in your power to be successful. Now, going ahead and moving on, we got a tweet over here from Mustache talking about the altcoin market. He says, while some are panicking, others see a perfect back test of the breakout from the year-long accumulation zone. No, folks, that's not bearish. This is extremely bullish. I'll tweet this in a few weeks and tell you I told you so. So this is a chart of the total two. This is the total market cap excluding Bitcoin. We just looked at this chart, but it's a pretty clear picture what he's painting. Right? We have the 2021 bull market. We, once we broke out of the accumulation, we back tested it, went sideways for a few weeks, and then we had our bull run. Chart looks identical in 2024 now. We have the bear market accumulation in all coins break out of the accumulation zone. We're retesting it right now. What happens after the retest? Well, if it's if it is a successful retest, we go parabolic from here. So like I've been saying, I think that the acceleration phase of the market is coming soon. 
the acceleration phase looks like this part of the chart where we go vertical. It's going to come eventually sometime soon. And I'm definitely positioned in my altcoins. And, you know, if we see lower prices, I'll position myself even further. But, you know, I'm good. I'm, I'm good with where I'm at right now. And yeah, I agree with this tweet 100%. Like we have really good things to look forward to here. So if you're down and out and you've lost a ton of money and you got you you got involved in some of these rugs over the past few days on these AI coins or something like Grand Base, just know there's going to be more opportunities to make that back and a lot more. So keep that chin up. A lot of good times ahead. Let's run through this news before we get into our altcoin Q&A. So this is something interesting I wanted to share with you guys today. And you guys know that I used to be a fan of Hedera Hashgraph HBAR. But I changed my stance in like August, September of 2023. And... The reason why I don't like HBAR anymore is because I learned that, first of all, they had an undisclosed private sale for friends and family, and they didn't disclose that. And then they had another private sale where they got like investors and VCs in. And the, the friends and family round just got in so much lower that they were able to just dump on everybody else, basically. So really sketchy stuff. But overall, right, the market cap of HBAR peaked out in 2021 at $7 billion. It's currently at 2.8 billion but you know the price um the, there's so much dilution is what i'm trying to say a lot of dilution right now price just crashed a bit because of the market wide crash but overall a ton of dilution on h bar and it, even more now so this tweet says yikes hedera continues to dilute their token and h bar holders are left with the bag According to Masari Crypto, Masari is one of the best research you know, tools and they say intelligence products in the market. It's a very reliable source. According to Masari Crypto, on April 10th, 2 billion tokens were added to the HBAR supply. HBAR continues to get diluted while the market cap goes up. So not a surprise to me. And this is most of your coins like in the top 100. Most of these coins are just favored to insiders, to the team and the early investors. It's not necessarily a fair thing at all. And that's why I, I say now the new coins are where you should focus. Like somebody just asked me about that SWFTC coin. I don't know how the tokenomics are, but at this point, you know, who knows who's controlling most of those tokens. So that's why we like the new coins that don't have bag holders. And we look for things like a fair launch or at least fair tokenomics where the teams and you know the insiders and the VCs don't have the favor of getting all the tokens and controlling the supply. So yeah, all you H bar holders out there, I think my altcoins are going to continue to outperform you this entire cycle. It's pretty funny. I don't have the tweet available right now. I don't have it open. But back in like November when Tau first started to pump, I was posting on X about Tau. And I remember there was this guy, he was like an older guy, and he said he was a PhD in his X account bio. Like over here, um, over here in like November for Tau when it was pumping, this happened on X. So I was tweeting about Tau, and this guy's like, "You should also get H bar." And I was like, "Dude, H bar sucks. I would not get H bar." He's like, "Okay, we'll see about that." And I was like, "Yeah, we will see. We'll see which coin performs better." Tau went like, I don't know, 15x from my entry and HBAR did what, a 2x? So again, my altcoins are most likely going to continue to smoke and outperform all of the old stuff like HBAR, XRP, XLM, all these old banker coins that are horrible tokenomics and diluted to, to oblivion. Like if this at this point, if you don't understand what I am saying and if you don't get it, there's nothing that can be done to save you. You are, you have complete Stockholm syndrome with your H bar bag. You are so manipulated and so brainwashed to continue to hold it, to just get used and dumped on by the insiders that will keep continue to release billions and billions of more into circulation. If you don't get what I'm saying by now, there's nothing that can be done to save you. So wisen up. 
Tau is a fair launched AI coin that has great tokenomics, and that's why it's going to smoke HBAR, continue to perform way better than it this cycle. And I'm using Tau as the example because Tau was my biggest position back then. And, you know, if I was holding HBAR, I wouldn't have nearly as much gains as I have right now. It would be a completely different situation. So the coins you hold will determine where you end up this cycle. It will determine your results. And there's a lot of people that have the wrong information in their head because most people have no idea what they're talking about when it comes to crypto. There's hundreds, thousands of YouTube channels talking about HBAR, that it's the best coin and all this. Like you guys are getting manipulated and you just are being led down the wrong path and you believe it and until you change and start walking down the right path you're not going to have the results that you want in crypto it's it's as simple as that and it's getting to a point now where it's like i don't even want to repeat myself anymore like how many times do i have to repeat myself seriously until you guys get it most of you guys do get it by now which is great if you want to learn more of what I'm talking about, get my free ebook on Gumroad that, that goes into this stuff. This free ebook, How to Build a Winning Crypto Bull Run Portfolio. This was in September. I actually said HBAR was a good coin in this ebook, but my stance changed shortly after. Um, so, yeah, when I say HBAR in this list, in this ebook, it's old, it's outdated, and I don't like the coin. I don't hold it, sold it all for stuff like Tau, and I did much better. Anyways, that is my message to anybody out there with Stockholm Syndrome on their altcoins. their old ones that have horrible tokenomics with diluted supply. Wake up where you're going to continue to un get underperformed by everybody this cycle that you know knows to look for the new coins with good tokenomics, fair launch, etc. Meme coins are way better than HBAR because meme coins don't have insiders with all the supply. Retail, the communities hold the supply of meme coins. It's much more distributed. And... I'm not going to repeat myself anymore. Dilution plays a major factor in your results and the tokens you hold. And HBAR is one of the worst out there. Anyways, moving on. One more kind of tweet piece of news before we open this up to an altcoin Q&A. And that is uh, a tweet by Sivo. Uh, where did it just go? Was it this first one here? No, it wasn't. Give me a moment. When I find this tweet, he says, so he tweeted, he says, I will exit the markets before end of year and go on a long vacation. And Sivo says, many are thinking the same, but remember, death is the only way out of crypto. I don't know when the top is in, but I know I won't be here in bear markets anymore. We spend years here day in and day out to have a positive impact on people's journey and never matters what cycle phase we are. But then some people start following after we gained 300,000 followers for his case. Lots of insights and judges are, are based on us um, on one investment that is going wrong. Nail the bottom in 2022, riding since uh, bias hasn't changed with the candles, only missed his meme trade, but you can't catch it all. Um, he says, but I see now that someone is only as good as his last trade. And it's a very good point, right? <laughs> and for me personally, like I'm growing, I'm growing on YouTube and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of new people are coming in and it's so true, right? Like a lot of people are very respectful and show support, but there's a lot of people that will only you know, judge you by what you just said and not all the value you've provided for the past few years. So, you know, I'm kind of in the same camp here. Like, I don't know what's going to, what it's going to look like going forward. I'll still be active in crypto, but to be posting videos every week and going live every week, like I did in the previous bear market, like, I don't know if that's going to happen again. Um, but I'll still be watching, but in terms of how active and stuff, who knows? Cause like there, there is a lot of uh, negativity and hate out there with a lot of people. So 
I don't know, good tweet from Steve. I wanted to share it today. And it, it, he brings up a very good point, right? People, recency bias is a very real thing. And people will only, you know, talk about what you recently did and, and not everything you've done now, all the good you've done um, over years. So it's an interesting time, right, with social media. Anyways, that gets through our news and tweet Twitter wisdom segment of the stream. Let's get back to the Q&A and looking at all coins. So again, four days until the halving, four days and three hours until the halving now, right around the corner, and we're in a bull market. So Benjamin says, hi, Connor. Great. You were live again. What's your price prediction for dual game GPT? I think dual can go to like maybe a $500 million market cap. Right now it's at like a 30. So yeah, I think this one can perform well, but... I don't see it as like a top tier gaming project. I just think it's going to pump. That's basically my stance on it. Thoughts on Celestia? I don't love Celestia. It's getting smashed really hard right now. Losing all important relevant levels. You know, it's hanging on to nine bucks, but you know, overall this can certainly come down here to to seven. It already hit seven here, this level. Maybe even five. I think a lot of people are selling this, including like the team and, and VCs. So I don't know. I, I think there's way better altcoins to hold than Celestia. Kazia says, Are you bullish on the gaming narrative? I hope you look into Lit Lab Games and Abyss World. I'm certainly bullish on the gaming narrative. I, I'm very much bullish on gaming. Now, Lit Lab Games, it's decent. It's not my favorite. I know you said you just found me, um, Kazia. You just found the channel here. But I said in the past, you know, quite recently in some other live streams that Lit Lab Games, it's okay as a gaming project, but it's it's not something in the same category as something like Nakamoto Games or Echelon Prime. So maybe it will do well, but it's it's not for me. I don't I don't like it a lot. And then AWT as well. Maybe it's good for a trade, but it's not something I would like hold a position in for the cycle. And it's, this is like a really really low market cap too, so it's going to move really volatile, and it's not going to pump until the gaming run starts. So yeah, those two are definitely not my favorite gaming coins. G says, what about? I have no idea what that means, G. I don't know what you're talking about there. NF guy says, hey, Connor, thanks for live streaming today. Any thoughts on RFK Jr. Independence Token? RFK is going to get big in the news as the presidential election ramps up. So I do like I do like political coins. Obviously, there's MAGA Trump. There's Geo Bowden. There's Big Mike. And now we got R RFKJ. Let's take a look at the chart. It's probably going to pump just because, you know, people love this stuff. It's on ETH. This one's probably going to do decent, especially with RFK getting in the media and stuff. So this could be a great hold. I like the political tokens. You know, obviously there's MAGA. There's Geo Bowden. Let's see where Bowden's at now. Geo Bowden is at 404 mil. I think it passed MAGA, right? Maga Trump is at 318. No, that's the wrong one. I don't know where Trump's at. Big Mike. Big Mike will do the best out of all these if if um you know Obama gets selected as the nominee. It's gonna do better than all these. So yeah, I still have Big Mike for sure. Now there's RFKJ. They're all gonna be good plays as we get closer to the election. That's what I think. Adrian Kent says, what's your thoughts on Poke T Network? Pocket Network. I've heard of this one. I haven't done extensive research into what it is. The RPC base layer, Web3 infrastructure with high uptime. So an infrastructure utility coin see how the chart looks chart looks good launched in in the bear market so it has not seen a, a bull run yet that's promising 
And the chart looks really good. You know, it's having its first correction from the start of the run in, in like November, uh, October, November, having its first correction, definitely reaching oversold levels now, you know, breaching through the 200 daily EMA. Looking at this chart on this time frame, looks like we already hit this level over here. That's going to be a really big support to hold at 13 cents. If we do lose that, this one here at eight cents would be the next one but the chart looks healthy it's been performing good so that means when the market turns around this should have its next leg higher right if a chart looks like this i don't think there's any reason to be concerned about it it's a good looking chart it's a bullish chart obviously it's correcting it lost this trend line that's clearly bearish you know this is a multi-month trend line but i just don't think that this cycle is over yet so i think you're pretty good in holding something like this if you like it Bullish Bradley with us today. What's going on, Bullish Bradley? He says, quick dip to 40K in the charts before the weekend. It's possible, Bradley. It's definitely possible we dip further, something like to $40,000. Um, 50K is going to be the big level to hold. But, you know, I can see a scenario. Like, if we're going to go down here to 50K, it's going to have to be some really bearish headlines because we have the ETFs. Now there's the Hong Kong ETFs. There's a ton of buying pressure still. But with fear, with war headlines, that can obviously drive price lower in the short term. And that usually does mark great buying opportunities. I can see a scenario where we we go through 50K and we go test like 45 or something like that. But very quickly, it would be a very short-lived dip. And most likely, unless you're sitting directly in front of your computer screen with your exchange open, or if you already have limit orders set, you'll miss a dip into the 40s for, for Bitcoin. I don't think it would be. Um, I don't think there would be a lot of time to take advantage of prices if we go that low. So it can happen. Like I said, we we certainly can go lower. I, I'm going to assume you just joined the stream recently, and if you guys are just tuning into the stream right now, be sure to smash the like button if you're enjoying it so far. But again, I said in the beginning of the stream, there's a, there's a pretty good chance we go lower here, and that we're not done with this selling. Right, we just put in a back test at the four hour 200 EMA. We got rejected. We're coming back down to 60K now. We can easily lose it and go go lower. So, yeah, bullish Bradley, that's a possibility for sure and something we should be prepared for. Anyways, what are my thoughts on Mavia at $3? So, Hero, Heroes of Mavia is a new gaming project that's actually getting played and it seems to be actually good. And let's see this chart. Wow. So, it, this this looks like opportunity. I know this one was really hyped up. Like really, really hyped up. I know a lot of people were playing this game and they've been enjoying playing the game. Now, what happened here? Well, as always, with especially gaming tokens, they have pre-sales. They have like VCs investing in them and getting into the seed round. And this has been out now for a few months since February. So I'm going to assume a lot of these tokens are becoming unvested and going into circulation. So what does that mean? It means there's selling pressure. So this is early buyers, pre-sale buyers selling all of this. That's exactly what this is. And yeah, I think with a legitimate game, something that's good and getting played where people can, I'm going to assume this is play to earn. I don't know for sure with Heroes of Mavia, but if it is play to earn, that's very bullish. But yeah, all the pre-sale guys are selling their tokens and probably a good opportunity to scoop it up if you like the game and you would actually play it yourself. I know Portal. Uh, let's check out Portal. Same thing here with Portal, right? Big pre-sale, people up 50x on the pre-sale. Guess what? As they get their tokens invested, they're going to sell. They're going to take their money, take their profits and put it elsewhere. Portal and Mavia, their chart looks exactly the same. And it's not a coincidence. Pre-sale uh, buyers have turned into sellers, and it's driving the prices of these tokens much lower. When gaming season starts, they will be much higher. So yeah, if you like these gaming coins, it's a decent opportunity to buy the red. But it can go lower still. So again, don't go all in. Don't one-clip the order. You should scale into something like that. 
Tannis TV says, which gaming coin would you put 1K in today? It depends on your risk tolerance. Me personally, what gaming coin would I put 1K in? Knock is at a huge discount, 100 mil market cap. I think it's one of the best gaming projects out there. So Knock is a great option. I think Knock can like 20, 30x on a conservative end from here and you know possibly pull something crazy and go like 50 to 100x maybe if it goes to 5 to 10 billion. It's possible. Prime, I don't think any of us own enough of this coin. I, I mean, I... I got in at three bucks. I got a decent position, but man, with everything that's coming out from Prime nowadays, like I should have made this one of my biggest positions in my entire portfolio. Again, obviously hindsight is 2020, but Echelon Prime is one of the best gaming projects on the entire market. It has a very high valuation right now, um, but I think it's just one of the most solid projects out there. So like those are my top two gaming coins. You know, those two are great. If you want to go more on the, the higher risk, I think Domi Online is a great gaming project. I'm interested to see how Domi is going to do in their game if it gets adopted. Epic is decent. Epic's holding up really well during this time of volatility. It's, it's really not going down at all. It's exactly where it's been. AGI, not really a gaming coin, but it kind of is. More AI, but also gaming to a degree. That's a $1,000 in AGI, I think, would be a really good payout. Uh, Delisium currently, let's check out our Delisium market cap. 185 mil. Yeah, I mean, this can go to 5 billion, probably. So what is that? Somebody do the math, like a 40, 30, 40x. So yeah, there's a lot of good buys right now with 1K in gaming. Silva Dallas says, let's smash that like empire. Smash up that like button, guys. Thrive Integration says, thanks, brother. We got Sniff saying, yo, Connor, have you heard of a token called OmniFlix? Sniff, that's a good question, man. I've never heard of that one, but we'll take a look at it. OmniFlix Network. What is this one? See the chart for OmniFlix. So on our daily time frame here, it's not looking great being that we just lost the bottom of our green zone. Those are key support resistance flip levels, the tops and bottoms of our green zones on my charts. Uh, you were extremely oversold below your, your daily moving averages. Now this had a very good run. You know, it peaked out over here at 50 cents. It went from, it went from two cents to 50 cents. It did a 25 X in January, and then it's been selling off since. Now, ideally, it's going to slow selling off in this range from 10 cents to seven and a half. Like, you really want to see this hold sniff at 10 cents where it already wicked through, or else, or else you're coming to five. This level right here. Yeah, five cents, maybe. But you, you want to see 10 cents hold right now. 10 to seven cents, you want to see that hold. If not, you can come down to five. Um, but yeah, Sniff, I know you, you're a big OmniFlix bull, so I don't know how you played it. I hope you were able to sell a lot up here with like over 20x gains. Um, but even still, I know you were holding from the bottom, so you're still up at least 5x. But yeah, you want to see it hold 10 cents from here on out. We got Luca saying, hey, O'Connor, what's going on, Luca? What base coins are you bullish on? Um, Base coins, meme coins mainly. There's a new DEX coming out on base at the end of this month that I'm bullish on. I'm going to make a video about that. But other than that, we got meme coins on base. Obviously, QCAT Candle, obviously, Boda and Dig, same ones I've been talking about. Brett and Toshi, I'm bullish on. I think those are going to be the top two. I think CCC could get up to their level, but Brett and Toshi right now are the established top two. But yeah, base right now, it's essentially all meme coins. Um, the decentralized exchange, it's going to be the first decentralized exchange on base um, with a V4 DEX. Like right now, Uniswap only has version three. A V4 DEX opens up so many more possibilities. 
like limit orders. So you're going to be able to place limit orders on Unis or not. On, it's not going to be Uniswap. It's going to be um, a, a different new decentralized exchange. The first one with V4 on base. Um, but yeah, you're going to be able to place limit orders. It's also going to be really good for institutions, right? Because institutional projects, investments, they basically have like KYC features built into V4. And it's going to allow tokens to, to basically do like a launch through a DEX. And this new DEX is going to be the only V4 DEX on base. So that's going to come out at the end of the month. I'm bullish on that. Besides that, that's the only utility project. And then there's only meme coins on base. Backstabber says, peak network launching next month. Crest already out. Peak ecosystem is too big for it to not be invested in. So yeah, peak is going, it's like the best D-pin project. Uh, yeah, you said Crest is already out. Crest is like their canary network. It's their test network for you know their D-pin uh, products. And then Peak is going to be like the actual main net, similar to Kusama and Polkadot, where Kusama is the canary test network. But I agree with you. I think Peak is going to be a top D-pin project. So Backstabber, you're on the right, you're on the right, uh, we're on the same wavelength. Let me say that. Anyway, Saxton says, would you reposition at a render into Cubic? Um, it depends when you got into render, but I think Cubic has much more upside. <clears throat> so if you want to go a little more further on the risk spectrum for more upside, yeah, I, I would be holding Cubic over render. I have both, but I've only been adding to Cubic. I mean, I got my render like below two bucks, right? So it's it's in a great position. But yeah, I think Cubic has a lot more upside than render from here. So, I mean, it's up to you if you want to reposition. Depends on your own circumstances. But again, I think Cubic is going to outperform render from here. Mike B1800, he says, Naka not getting traction these days. It's not. Naka isn't getting much traction these, these days, but... Does that mean the fundamentals have changed and it's now like a bad project and all the work they've been doing has gone to waste and their games just suck now? No, it's the same fundamentals. It's just a lower price. So again, I've I've been invested in Naka. Um, I got in relatively late at like around 80 to 90 cents, um, but still early enough where I think I'll be really you know comfortable. But yeah, Naka has been crashing. The entire market's been crashing. Gaming coins haven't been doing anything. Naka was a clear leader for a long time. There was definitely a lot of hype with Naka. And I think a lot of whales have been exiting. People that have been holding their positions from the bottom. Because let's not forget, you know, Naka at the bottom was trading for 5 cents at its lowest. 5 to 10 cents. It goes up to 3 bucks. Did like a, a 30, 40x. So all the big whales that were holding from the bottom, I'm assuming they've been taking profit. And, you know, once their selling is absorbed, again, the fundamentals haven't changed of Nakamoto games. It's still one of the best fundamentally sound gaming coins out there. Focused on mobile gaming, integrated in Telegram. So yeah, right now it's not getting traction. Um, it's selling off. And I think this is going to be a great opportunity when we look in the future. Because the fundamentals are the same. It's just the price that's different right now with Naka. Thrive Integration says, what are your thoughts on runes setting up his Bitcoin core right now? I think runes are going to do good. I think runes is going to be a really bullish narrative. It's the next version of ordinals. Uh, I haven't really been investing in those projects myself, but I've been keeping an eye on it, kind of paying attention from a distance and I don't know. The stuff is really, it's valued pretty high right now. It probably will go higher, you know, at the halving when the runes get released. But I'm doing fine focusing on what I've been good at. And that's, you know, trading altcoins. And recently I've had some huge wins with memes. So I'm going to focus on what I, you know, I know I'm good at, where I know I have proven results, right? I, I have receipts. I don't really have receipts for the Bitcoin ordinals ecosystem, right? I have receipts for altcoins and for meme coins. That's what I'm good at. I'm going to stick with what I'm good at personally. You got to know yourself, right? As the, that great philosopher once said. But there's definitely a lot of opportunity with runes out there. 
Silva Dalla says the Uniswap just increased fees from 0.15 to 0.25. After this, that's almost double. So yeah, Uniswap fees going up again. New new decks coming out on base. I think it's going to be the biggest on base. Uh, Jasper says hi, Connor. What's up, Jasper? Invest World says, bro, CCC is one of the best memes I've seen. So classic and easy to understand. Yes, sir. I agree with you. It's so easy to understand. It's obvious. It's a cute cat just warming up with his candle. The meme ability is 10 out of 10. It's a real life picture. Um, easy for people to understand. There's no confusion. It's simple. It's clean. It, it, it's a great meme. It has all the categories of you know, all the previous great memes like Dog Whiff Hat, um, you know, Pepe. Everybody understands Pepe. It's the frog that gets passed around on crypto Twitter. It's like the meme, when it's simple and easy, it, there's no explaining. CCC is in that same category. It's a cute cat warming up with his candle. And yeah, that's really all there is to it. And this guy says, why are you bullish on CCC? I just explained it basically. Uh, and again, somebody like LYX, I, I found it from him, and he's one of the best meme callers out there. He's very under under the radar. Not many people know him. I've been following him for years at this point, and I've seen him just hit grand slam after grand slam with meme coins, catching them at like one mil, two mil. They go to billions. I'm not fading him, and I, I also understand CCC, and I, I get the the narrative. So, yeah, I'm bullish on it. Crypto Cobain says, big love empire. Let's get it. What's going on, Crypto Cobain? Foxy, yeah, Foxy on Linea. That's probably going to be the top meme on Linea. I haven't been doing anything to farm it or get it. Gary M says, I've been hearing a lot of talk of a left translated cycle. What's your view regarding cycle top? And what are your personal price targets for Bitcoin? Are you expecting 200K Bitcoin top next year? No, not next year. I think... I think the left translated cycle, I, I am leaning towards that. And that would mean we top out at the end of this year. I don't know what the number is going to be. I, I'm going to assume it's going to be over 100,000. Um, I'm just going to watch for signs and, and watch for my altcoins to pump. And I'm just going to look to to follow my strategy that I've had in place now for a long time. And I'm just going to execute that strategy. I'm going to sell my altcoins. Uh, just like Sivo said over here, right? Um, he's going to exit the markets before end of year and go on a long vacation. Like we don't have to time the exact top. If our altcoins are up and we're happy, if we have our goals met and we can sell and, and get that money and, you know, cash out, that's it, right? We put too much time energy into these markets to not pay ourselves at the end of it all. So I don't know when the top is going to be. I do think it will be this year. I don't know what the number is going to be for Bitcoin. I don't know the prediction or the time that it's going to top. I just know when when it's time to get out there will be signs the numbers when you check your portfolio will be crazy high and that's there's going to be people saying they only need another 2x and they're going to be greedy and they're going to get caught in the huge crash at the end my goal is to sell before the huge crash at the end as long as i can do that i'm happy so i don't i don't really know the details gary of you know when everything's going to top out i think before it's going to happen this year, but um, yeah, that's that. And see, Connor, any thoughts on Bridget? Yeah, Bridget kind of died off. I still think it's a funny, it's a really funny meme. Base Bridget. <laughs> it's also a political finance meme too. Uh, yeah, it's died off now and it's, it's slow. It could make a comeback. I've seen these charts make a comeback before, but you know, it's... It's basically bottomed out now. So we'll see if, if it comes back. I, I think that dude is going to do that like cycling tour in Europe this summer. I don't know. We'll see if he does that. I don't know. That guy like goes for another, a new meme coin every other week and says he's going to do a cycling tour for it. So maybe he'll do it for Bridget or some other coin he likes. I don't know. But yeah, I mean, it had a good run, but now it's floored out. So. We'll see if it makes a comeback, and hopefully our boy does his cycling tour through Europe this summer. <laughs> uh, let's see. Katie Randall says, advice. How future cycles will be different is level-headed gold. Yeah, for sure. They're not going to look the same, Katie. Thoughts on RSS3? I don't know what this project is. I can't really give thoughts on it.
some kind of utility AI project. So on our weekly time frame, it launched in the bear market. Chart looks good. Chart looks really good. Being that you're back testing, you know, this level over here at 36 cents on your listing pump, this this is where our candle body is open and closed. So that's a big level at 36 cents. It's also the top of the bear market accumulation resistance when price is pumped. I mean, this thing bottomed out at 7 cents. So it's up around 5x from the bottom bottom. And it's just back testing now your bear market accumulation top. So chart looks healthy and it's performed good, right? If, if you're holding an altcoin and it feels like you've been in the bear market this entire time, you're holding the wrong altcoin. Something like this, it pumped, it moved, right? It's, it's clearly in a bull market. Now you're having your first pullback. But yeah, this chart looks good, right? You're back testing the major resistance flip through support now, so... Healthy looking bullish chart. And I don't really know what this project is, but technicals look good. Maybe you come back down and you come back down into like the 28, 27 cent level. Basically 25 cents. You know, maybe you come and you go sideways for a long time before you start your next leg up. But overall, chart looks good. It's moved. Again, if you're holding an altcoin and it feels like you've been in the bear market this entire time, you're holding the wrong altcoin. Your coin hasn't moved. Yeah, it's it's no bueno. You probably get out of it. RAB653 says bought Rio on M. I mean, Rio is very good, man. I think buying Rio below two dollars, people are gonna look at that in like six, 12 months and just have their jaw on the floor. Like, I can't believe you bought Rio under two dollars. Yeah, I think Rio below two is good. I think Rio is gonna go to 20 to 50. Crypto Ranger says he aped into uh, Katamoto today. I think it will be a dark horse this cycle. Thanks for the Twitter awareness a couple weeks ago. No problem. Yeah, Katamoto coming out on April 19th, day of the halving. When do you think Domi Game will release? I, I don't know. I thought it would be out by now, to be honest with you. I don't know when they're going to release it. Hopefully soon. Rio MEXC, but can only W slash D on Algo or withdraw and deposit on Algorand. How do I fix? I'm not sure because you can get real on the, you know, you can buy it directly from Pancake Swap on the Binance Smart Chain. All right. If you look at where it's traded, OKX, Bing X, maybe you want to withdraw to BNB and buy it on the, on the Binance Smart Chain on chain. That that would be one way to work around only being able to withdraw and deposit on Algorand. Shout out to PT Minato. He says, good afternoon, Connor Kakashi. What's going on, Minato? Lord Fourth, good to see you in the live chat. Heavy T says, all love, brother. Shout out to Heavy T. Hit the like button, guys. Caspa. Good question on Caspa here. So Caspa, again, it's one of my largest positions in my spot portfolio. I think Caspa is going to go to two to three bucks this cycle. And notice... You know how we're kind of holding our 200 daily EMA right now. This is a very long accumulation or consolidation range has been in now from November. So for me personally, I bought Caspa here between four and five cents. Good timing, right? Went straight up now into its current range. It's a good time to add more. It is a good time to add more Caspa, even though it's double the price of where I got mine. I think it's it's going to be, you know, a, a 20 to 30 X from here. So I like Caspa in terms of fundamentals. It's one of the best on the market. It's in a different league. It's in a really different league. I think it is the closest thing to the next Bitcoin we have. And Caspa is a no brainer holding anybody's portfolio out there. It's on the safer side. There is obviously risk to it, but it's still on the safer side and it has a lot of upside to it. So I really like Caspa. Good project. Ped says Wagwan Connor. Shout out from London, bro. What's going on, Peds? It's good to see you. WP says, hey Connor, how you doing, my man? I'm doing good, brother. What's your thoughts on a render price prediction? I 
Render price prediction. It's kind of a hard one, man, because like this can go higher than anybody expects. They got the Apple Apple partnerships, you know, they got their CEO, um, heavy connections, very established. So currently market cap is 3.1 billion at $8. I'm going to say, I think render can go to at least, at the very, very least, it's going to go to a 10 bill market cap, which would be like $25. That's a very conservative prediction at a, at a 10 bill. If it goes to 20 billion, that's going to be around $50. And I think that's a pretty good prediction to have. Render at around a, a 20 billion peak market cap. $50, it's still kind of conservative because renders AI and AI is the best category in the crypto market to be invested in. So it could go higher, but I think like $50, $20 billion market cap is, is somewhere realistic to aim for, for render. Adam says, Hey Connor, thanks for your great content. Your opinion on pal. Uh, yeah, pal. I don't hold this. I missed it low, so I'm, I didn't chase it. It's still performing good. Healthy pullback here. Again, right to your daily EMAs and your obvious kind of level on the chart it wants to go to in terms of supply and demand. If it's going to sell off further, you're coming down here to $0.22, cents, $0.25 to $0.22. Cents. But overall, I think PAL will, will continue to do well this cycle as an AI project. It's not my favorite. I don't own it, but... I think you'll see some good gains in it, but watch out for 25 cents potentially if we crash further from here. Uh, Mike B says, regarding negativity on social media, I think it's because no one knows how to take ownership and responsibility over their own lives. It's always everyone else's fault. Yeah, lack of accountability. Nobody has any personal accountability anymore. And it's quite sad, especially in crypto, right? Because people just think they can listen to these guys online and they're going to be ultimately super successful. Look, <laughs> I started like really watching crypto YouTube in 2020. And who was like one of the bigger guys back then? It was BitBoy. So I watched BitBoy in 2020 and BitBoy would make videos on these altcoins. He would say they're great. He wouldn't say he got paid to make the videos and they would just rug pull basically. So I watched a BitBoy video in 2020. I, I put like half of an Ethereum into one of these coins he mentioned, went to zero. He deleted the video. It was an undisclosed paid shill. So I mean, yeah, a lot of people deserve, like when people do things like BitBoy does, they deserve the negativity, obviously. But there's a lot of people that do a lot of good and only truly want to help. And even still, because people have zero accountability, they just go after them. Um. So yeah, people need to own up and, and have personal accountability. I don't give financial advice. I literally just share with you what I'm doing and what I see. Like when I see an opportunity, I tell you guys, that's it. I'm just some normal dude who decided to make a crypto YouTube channel. Like don't call me an influencer. I hate that word. Uh, but yeah, it might be a good point. So I'm going to play around with this. Okay, cool. We can put comments on the. I don't even know I can do this. This is cool. <laughs> so this guy says, what's so bullish about CCC? I saw, I saw multiple people writing about it, but couldn't find much information on their site. So I think you're overlooking the fact that CCC is a meme coin and there's not going to be a lot of information on the website. I think you're overlooking that very important fact. Um, yeah, if you go to the, the website, it's it's very simple. It's a cute cat with a candle. Like if you go to the dog with hat website, it's the dog with a hat. That's all it is. It's it's a meme coin. And that's why it's bullish because it's a meme coin. It's funny. People can get behind it, right? There's a huge community forming around it. Meme coins are all about community. And this is also a, like, look at this. Like this has unlimited meme ability potential. I think it's funny. I think it's a great meme. That's why I'm bullish personally. But yeah, you're overlooking the fact that it's literally a meme coin. Like if we go to... We'll use whiff as an example. It's a dog with a hat. You go to the website. It's 
wait for this to load. What's going on here? We look at Pacha. I hate these things more than anything. Let's see if I get it right. Got it. Got him. Anyways, what is whiff? It's literally just a dog with a hat. So you're right now, if you go to the whiff website with the same mindset you're talking about CCC, you're going to be like, I don't understand what's so bullish about it. There's no information about the project. It's a meme coin. It's the point. It's literally the point. So anyways, you're overlooking the fact it's a meme. And that's why CCC is bullish. It's a good meme. In my very own humble opinion. Anyways, moving on. Tara says, hey, Connor, are you looking at any runes at this moment? On the fence about using Bitcoin to play in this sector. Now, I'm not really into runes, Tara. It's not my expertise. Not my expertise, Tara. Uh, Black Sun says, bullish on Say. I think Say is one of the better mid-cap options out there out uh, on the market for all coins. I don't own any of this, but if I was like, maybe if I was like older and I had less of a risk tolerance and stuff like that, I would be looking into say, but yeah, <clears throat> I, I do think this will do well this cycle and go to multiple dollars. Good pullback right now. If you notice, you know, we're right back at that listing candle pump key level on the chart, 200 daily EMA. And coming into demand, you, you tested the proximal line of demand over here at 41.7 cents already. So yeah, it's coming into some good levels to look to scoop it. I think this will do well as, as a high cap, mid cap project, layer one. Just not something I'm too personally interested in. Anyways, Heavy T says, right now it's mostly just player versus player until we get more retail in altcoins. And you're right. You're right, Heavy T. You know, if we go to our total three, total altcoin market cap, on the weekly time frame, we're just seeing money exit the system the past three weeks. You know, when money's coming in like this period, things are very easy because it's not PVP. There's new money coming in. But when there's money going out, it becomes a PVP market where everybody's just trading against each other and there's no new entrance, no new market participants with a fresh bank account not invested in crypto yet. They will come. They will come back. But, you know, right now it is PVP. What about net mine token? So this is the Chinese Tau. The Chinese bit tensor. I think it will do decent. I think it's a pretty decent AI pick. You know, they're going to launch their own layer one right now. It's really only on like Binance Smart Chain on PancakeSwap. But yeah, this one should do well. Opinion on Aerodrome, DeFi hub of a base. I would rather trade memes. We still love in Boda. I'm still bullish on Boda. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I, I got like 130x on Boda. So it's a totally risk-free position for me at this point. Obviously, after 130x, I'm going to realize some profit. But yeah, I still hold a bag of it. And I'm going to see, see if it becomes a huge meme on the chain. So definitely still bullish on Boda. Uh, Katie says, how about the Biden dog meme coins? <sighs> if, they've, if they're if they unpumped, cool. If they already pumped, stay away. That's, that's what I would say. <clears throat> I mean, listen. <laughs> Bowden's dog. It's ridiculous. 135K. Maybe, maybe it does good. It depends if it's a rug or not. I have no idea. You know, I, anybody could have made this. Then you got Cumminder. Ridiculous. Another one, 476K. I don't, it looks decent, right? It's it's relatively unpumped, hasn't hit a million market cap yet. It could do good, but as with all memes, expect to lose everything. Good luck. Anyways, guys. Anyways, uh, let's see. Crypto Middle East and Africa. He says, the one and only Connor Crypto Empire. Any thoughts on Ordi Swap? BRC20 narrative and could be a play for the bull run. High multiples are only a trade. 
I would say it's only a trade. I'm not crazy bullish on this, you know, all the ordinal tokens and stuff like that. Uh, what is boards? Especially because this is a DEX. I think there's a lot of competition with DEXs. Now this chart. This chart looks, I like the way this chart looks because it hasn't pumped. It's basically in a major, call it a wedge. It, this is a bullish consolidation. And if you hit, a, you already hit 11 cents. So yeah, the chart looks good. I would treat it as a trade. Have you talked about cubic yet? I did at the beginning of the stream and I said it's my main focus and you know one of it, it is the biggest position I hold. I think cubic yesterday buying it below 5k per billion was awesome. I would love to see that again even though I I mean I think I have enough of this to be honest with you. <laughs> I really do think I have enough but I don't know man. The diversification is not a growth strategy. A growth strategy is allocating capital into your highest conviction coins. And that's what I'm doing with Cubic. So I'm not gonna go diversify into 20 different AI coins. I'm gonna go heavy into the ones I think will do the best and, and pump. And Cubic is one of those for me. Connor, will you be playing the Rune ecosystem? I'm not playing it right now. I mean, maybe I'll get FOMO when everything pumps and want to play it, but I've been doing this long enough to not act on FOMO. So I don't know. I'm not really playing the runes ecosystem now. Thoughts on OXO, desync, and PAL. I hold OXO. I don't hold desync. I don't hold PAL. And I like OXO the best out of all of them, which is why I hold that. What are my thoughts on Constellation DAG? Is it time to give up on it? Not necessarily, right? Because it's not totally dead. I mean, obviously, it's been through a cycle before, so it doesn't really fit my criteria for something to hold, hold. But it's not like it's it hasn't left its bear market accumulation over here at four cents, right? It, it, it went to nine, it doubled. It's like H bar, and right? it's just not great, but it'll give you some gains. But I think there's just better options out there to really hold in your portfolio. Uh, price prediction for Bits Crunch. Ten mil market cap. It should at least bare minimum 20x from here but i don't know not financial advice i'm only speculating it should be going to multiple like multiple multiple dollars especially if we get an nft bull run again which i think we will you know that's going to be one of the most used nft analytics platform tools so it could do really well with an nft bull run it's definitely reliant on something like that happening right it needs that nft bull run to pump this guy pressed for cash. He says, just don't buy meme coins. This flush was for the meme coin tards. I disagree. Meme coins are holding up better than your utility altcoin projects in the top 100. Again, because the supply of meme coins are better distributed than the supply of your utility top 100 coins. They're not held by market makers and VCs. They're held by the community and the, and the team. And if it's a good team, they're going to want to see their meme coin succeed. So they're not going to you know, wreck their community. So I think meme coins are better than a lot of utility coins at this point in the cycle. Don't buy gummy. I agree. Like I said yesterday, I don't like crypto. Like crypto banter is not my cup of tea. Crypto banter is when you want to shut your brain off and listen to, to mindless consumption content. It's like watching NBC News. It's like mainstream media content. It doesn't give you any value. It's just mindless entertainment, basically. So yeah, the fact that banter is running gummy, I would stay far away from it. Kazia says, smash the like button, smash that like button up. Do you think investing in a coin who will be a token 2049 Dubai is a good idea? 
anybody can go to the conference in Dubai. So no, just on that factor alone, no, no. Uh, congrats on 50k subs. Thoughts on ICNX? What is ICNX? Icon X World. Fully diluted, sixty six million. On Mex C and Polygon is it on Quick Swap? Let's see our market cap. One mil undiluted, sixty six mil fully, so must be new with that much. Okay, launched in February. What is it? It's a racing game. So this is going to totally depend on the team's execution because I've seen racing games just come and go at this point. I've seen a lot of racing games come and go. Maybe they'll get some hype initially and the token will pump and then it'll just die off. So it's going to depend on the people who are in charge of this project. But the chart looks bullish. You had this long, long, slow drip sell-off and then you, you started pumping out of it from 20 cents now to 60 cents. So it's done a 3x from this local bottom over here, 20 cents. But yeah, I mean, the chart's making higher highs. So it's in an uptrend. So it, it's a super low market cap, you know, 1.7 mil, 135k liquidity. It doesn't take much money to move this. High risk, low cap gaming coin is what I would say about this this project, ICNX. <clears throat> but Yazin, thank you for the 50k subs. Congratulations, brother. I appreciate it. Uh, any insight on Ondo, BlackRock collaboration, real world asset? So yeah, Ondo. Look, I talked about Ondo a lot in January when it was like 20 cents. That was when I was on vacation in Australia. I was only doing live streams then, but you know, I was saying back then, Ondo's a good RWA play, and it, it is a good one. Um, I have Rio as my real-world asset play, and I'm not going to deviate from that. But Ondo's a decent option. Higher market cap, you won't see crazy, crazy returns, but it will still most likely do really well. What about Zeph? Disappointing coin so far. So yeah, Zeph hasn't done jack anything from its first pump in november right it went like 50x in november and then it's just been selling off fundamentals haven't changed I, I invested in this coin because of fundamentals i like privacy i've always liked privacy i held monero for a really 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 long time um i may or may not you know have some monero tucked away in a safe place for a rainy day who knows may or may not Right, maybe it got lost in a boating accident. But yeah, I like privacy coins, and Zeph is the new privacy coin with the most bullish fundamentals. So yeah, it's been very disappointing. It's been selling off. It's not looking good. But again, at this point, I'm going to see it through. I've done well enough elsewhere, and like memes and all these other plays where you know the money I put into Zeph, yeah, it sucks. It hasn't pumped. It sucks. I'm not in profit, but it's not the end of the world for me because I have other things going on, and you know other options to do well in this market where. If one of my coins doesn't perform, it doesn't really you know, totally affect me. But yeah, I agree. I would like to see Zeph make a recovery. I think it will, and I'm going to see the investment through. Sniff with a 499 super chat. He says, let's say hypothetically you wanted to do some... All right, Sniff, we can't talk about that. <laughs> we really can't talk about that, man. Uh, anyways, Thrive Integration says, followed your suggestion on Katamoto. Tried the Zilli pre-sale, but it was at 4 a.m. my time and missed it. So should I buy Katamoto when it launches or on the 19th or wait for it to pull back and ape in? I have no idea how it's going to go on the 19th with launch. Um, I'm not sure the best course of action to take. If it does dip, you know, maybe you can scale, you know, put some and scale in. It's a high risk meme coin. As with all meme coins, expect to lose everything. But you know, Katamoto is backed by a top five crypto launch pad. So I think they're going to want their coin to pump and do well. So we'll see if you get a dip when it launches. But again, it's high risk. It's a high risk play. What 
Joe the Toe. Shout out to our guy Joe the Toe in the stream. He's on a painting job today. My man Joe the Toe. Kaz, Rio, Alpha, good ones. Anyways, guys, listen up. We've been live for an hour, 25 minutes. It's time to wrap this one up. Hope you enjoyed the stream. We'll be live again tomorrow, so don't worry. Come back with your questions if I didn't get to it this stream. Uh, this live chat is off the charts, man. I really appreciate you guys being here, smashing up the like button, asking me all these questions. You know, I'm here to answer them, and I'm here to you know tell you guys my thoughts on the market. So thanks for coming out and being here. It is the Bitcoin halving week. We got four days, so I'll be live every single day leading up to the halving. So you'll see me again tomorrow if I wasn't able to get to your question today. But nonetheless, hope you enjoyed the stream. Smash that like button if you haven't smashed it yet. If you're watching this on Twitter or X, hit that little heart like thing and also follow me there. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, let's see. For, in terms of free resources, if you haven't read this ebook, you should read this ebook on Gumroad. Link is available in the description down below. Also on my website, cryptoempireco.io. If you go to the free resources section, I have the ebook I made in 2021. This is old, but there's still good information there. <clears throat> I also have this full course for free. This is on the channel, but I also put it on my website here. Look, this is a two hour video. Two hour long full beginner course for free on my website. Um, I have so many free resources. It's not even funny. If you go to my channel and go to the playlist section and in these playlists, where am I looking? Trading tutorials. Here we go. Trading tutorials. I don't know. There's quite a bit of, you know, TA trading view tutorials here on how i see the markets like hours of content here i have so much free content where if you're new to crypto you will literally go from like beginner to intermediate just watching my free content watch trading tutorials go to my website in the free resources section and watch this two hour long course full beginner co uh, course here it, like I, I go through everything right they're from 2021 but they still the information is still obviously relevant today I've made so much hours and hours and hours of content where there's everybody should be educated and know what's going on at this point. Like what else can I do at this point? How much more resources can I give you guys? Anyways, check out those free resources and thank you for being here in this live stream. Hope you enjoyed it. This is Connor from Crypto Empire signing out. I will see you in the next video.